Welcome to an application problem of Newton's Law of Cooling that results in an initial value problem that can be solved using the technique of separation of variables. To begin, Bob made a cup of coffee and Bob likes to drink coffee once it reaches 60 degrees Celsius and will not burn him. Initially at time t equals zero minutes, Bob measured the temperature and the coffee was 89 degrees Celsius. One minute later, Bob measured the coffee again and it was 85 degrees. The temperature of the room, the ambient temperature, is 22 degrees. When should Bob start drinking? Let big T be the temperature of the coffee in degrees Celsius, and let A be the ambient temperature or room temperature, also in degrees Celsius. Newton's law of cooling states that the rate at which the temperature of the coffee is changing is proportional to the difference between the ambient temperature and the temperature of the coffee. That is, D big T dt, meaning the change in the temperature of the coffee with respect to the time in minutes is equal to some constant k times the difference of A and big T, where A is the ambient temperature and big T is the temperature of the coffee. Before we go on, let's record all the given information or the initial conditions. To begin, at time zero, the temperature is 89 degrees Celsius, which means big T of zero equals 89. After one minute, the temperature is 85 degrees, which indicates big T of one equals 85. And since the ambient or room temperature is 22 degrees, we know A is equal to 22. To answer the question, we want to find the time little t such that big T of little t is equal to 60 degrees Celsius. And that's working on determining the particular solution to the differential equation. To begin, we know big A is equal to 22. Let's go ahead and replace A with 22, giving us d big T dt equals k times the quantity 22 minus t. If you look at the textbook, they do leave A in the equation, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace it with 22 now. Because we're gonna end up solving for big T, it'll be helpful if big T is positive, and therefore let's factor out negative K from the right, giving us D big T dt is equal to negative K times the quantity T minus 22. And now we solve the differential equation using the technique of separation of variables. We need the quantity T minus 22 on the left, and therefore we multiply both sides of the equation by one divided by the quantity t minus 22, and then we write the differential equation in differential form, or we can think of multiplying both sides of the equation by dt, which gives us one divided by the quantity big T minus 22 d big T equals negative k times dt. And now we integrate both sides of the equation. The indefinite integral of one divided by the quantity big T minus 22 with respect to big T is equal to natural log absolute value of big T minus 22 plus a constant, but we'll include the constant on the right. On the right, the indef integral of negative k with respect to t is equal to negative kt plus c. And now we need to solve the equation for big T. We can do this two ways. We can write the log equation as an exponential equation, or we can exponentiate both sides of the equation with the base of e. Either case, natural log of the absolute value of big T minus 22 equals negative kt plus c is equivalent to the quantity big T minus 22 equals e raised to the power of negative kt plus c. Notice I dropped the absolute value around big T minus 22 because the exponential on the right is always positive. And because the exponent on the right is a sum, we can write this as e to the power of negative kt times e to the power of c, where e to the power of c is just some constant. Let's let this equal d and therefore we can solve for big T and get big T is equal to 22 plus D times e to the power of negative KT. And now that we have the general solution, we need to determine D and K using the initial conditions. Let's do this on the next slide. Again, there's some work here from the textbook. I'm gonna go ahead and show some additional work. Let's first determine the value of D using the initial condition, big T of zero equals 89. To do this, we substitute zero for T and 89 for big T. This gives us 89 equals 22 plus D times e to the power of negative K times zero. We do the zero is equal to one, and therefore solving for D, we simply subtract 22 on both sides, and we have D equals 67. So now we know big T is equal to 22 plus 67 times e to the power of negative KT. And now we can use the second condition of big T of one equals 85 to determine K. To do this, we substitute one for T, and 85 for big T. This gives us 85 is equal to 22 plus 67 times e to the power of negative K times one, which is just negative K. And now we solve for K. 
First we subtract 22 on both sides, and then we divide both sides by 67. Next we take the natural log of both sides of the equation to solve for k. On the right, natural log of e to the power of negative k, applying the power property of logs is equal to negative k times natural log e, but natural log e is one, giving us negative k equals the natural log of 63 sixty-sevenths. Next, we divide both sides by negative one and go to the calculator. Negative natural log of 63 sixty-sevenths is approximately 0 0.0616. So now we have the particular solution. We have big T is equal to 22 plus 67 times E raised to the power of negative 0 0.0616 T. And now we can finally answer the question, how long it will take for the coffee to reach 60 degrees Celsius by solving the equation big T of T equals 60, meaning we substitute 60 for big T and solve for time little t. Let's do this on the next slide. Here's the equation we want to solve. We first subtract 22 on both sides. Next, we divide both sides by 67. Take the natural log of both sides of the equation. The right side simplifies nicely to negative 0.0616t. To solve for t, we divide both sides by negative 0.0616. Going to the calculator, we have t is approximately 9.206 minutes. This means Bob's coffee will reach 60 degrees Celsius in approximately 9.2 minutes. And therefore, we should wait 9.2 minutes before he drinks his coffee. Before we go, let's also look at this graphically. In both graphs, the dark blue function is a temperature function big T of t. On the left, horizontal lines are drawn at temperatures 60 degrees in pink, 85 degrees in brown, and 89 degrees in green. The vertical lines are drawn at t equals one, and t equals 9.21. That's here and here. Notice the temperature of the coffee is 85 degrees at t equals one minute here, and 60 degrees at approximately 9.21 minutes, which is this intersection point here. On the right, the graph is over a long period of time with a horizontal line at the ambient temperature, 22 degrees Celsius. I hope you found this helpful.